developed lenses, special lenses for cameras to film his movies with because they did a different uh, size of a picture or something for the screen. The man was involved in, in the most minuscule details of his own movies. He wasn't just a clown. Like all great performers who you think are just one thing, they're really more than that one thing. That goes for every medium, including talk radio. Those of us who are really on top in this field are sticklers for details, and we know, uh, you know, we should know all the elements of our, of our craft. In addition to talking, we should also know about the microphone, <laughs> microphone levels, uh, things of that nature. Oh, I just got a pain in the left side of my neck. Why did I say that? Because I'm problems with my microphone. <laughs> so b before we get uh, sidetracked, we don't even have time to play it. We play one Jerry Lewis thing. Okay, here's Obama. And what was he on? The uh, What channel was this on? This came to us from the Christian something or other? What's EWTN? I don't know what it is. Well, it would be nice if someone spelled it. See what I mean by sticklers for details? No one knows what EWTN is. Because I didn't say to him, spell it out before the show. Okay, here is Jerry Lewis slamming Obama in clip two. You can't really knock the president per se because he was never given to understand that's out there. He was never ready. He was never prepared for it. And what I'm watching in him is uncertainty. And you don't have uncertainty in a leader. A leader doesn't give a what he does but he gets it done next on isis clip three please you got to remember something that isis has attacked the world all right okay and we've got all of a sudden i'm wondering where are all of our nato allies why don't i have germany and italy and great britain why don't i have all of them including spain doing something Get all of your military together, bring that military to our military, and wipe them out. They're asking to be stopped. And we're not stopping, and we're just reporting what they're doing. That's ridiculous. A comedian would be a better commander-in-chief than the imposter from Honolulu. Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. What do you think about the refugees? Allowing refugees, these refugees should stay where the hell they are. They say there's a humanitarian crisis. They're fleeing. They have to come to hey, America. Hey, nobody has worked Europe. harder for the human condition than I have. But they're not part of the human condition. If 11 guys in that group of 10,000 are ISIS, how can I take the chance? Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose another Frenchman or another Englishman. Jerry Lewis, comedian, knows more about politics than the president. More common sense in a comedian who must be 90 today. He must be 90, right? He's how old? Look him up. I remember seeing him live when I was a kid. Oh, I don't know. I was a wee lad. Catskill Mountains, like Jerry Lewis was on stage at the Browns Hotel. And I remember going up to, to getting near him. He was, you know, you know how it is when you're a kid, you idolize people. Entertainers are like gods. Ball players, can you imagine what Mickey Mantle looked like to me? I actually have a baseball for those of you who are baseball nuts from the <laughs> the Yankee Stadium from 1954. Can you believe it? I still have it in a drawer somewhere. It must be worth ten, twelve dollars today. <laughs> now the baseball collectors will say, "Mike, it's worth." I don't know. It's not for Mickey Mantle. Not signed by him. Don't get me wrong. It was a foul ball. How I, as a pipsqueak kid, got it, I don't know, with the crowd killing each other for it. It says Yankee Stadium with a date from 1954 was stitched. It's a lot of the stitches. But I remember Jerry Lewis when I, you know, you see him on the screen, so he's a jerky clown, right, as a kid? Hey, Dean! Like a spastic loony. And kids loved him because they all, f see, kids all feel weak and like, lo kids feel weak, losers, outsiders. In an adult world. So when they see a comedian going like, hey, Dean, acting like a stupid child, they love him. So I, I see him in person. He's six foot two and good looking. I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know what a skilled actor he was. Did he go from being a big guy to being like a schlemiel type in a movie? I'm just saying, you know, how people are deceptive in person. The same with Obama. You look at him, you listen to his voice, you're booming, boom, boom. Um, 
taking on the world. And then you see a picture of me. Looks like he's 98 pounds. You don't know what's what anymore in the world. Everything is a distortion. All we know is this, is that we don't have a commander-in-chief that we can trust. We're losing the war against ISIS. The country is being overrun by illegal immigrants. The country is bankrupt financially. Let's put aside all of my philosophy and politics for a minute. From a fiscal point of view, we're bankrupt. You may not know it, but we're bankrupt. Obama's a criminal. All he's doing is printing money. Janet Yellen, in the same time, she's in a dark cell somewhere. She's in Florence, Colorado for what she's doing to the economy. Florence, Colorado would be too good for these people. Printing money around the clock to feed the, the disease of the welfare state. Not raining in a dime. Don't talk to me about Paul Ryan. Don't start it with him. He's the quizzling of our time. He is the quizzling of our time running a Democrat party within the Republican Party the same way that quizzling ran a puppet Nazi party inside Norway after Hitler invaded. Paul Ryan is the quizzling of our time. They are all fundamentally criminals and gangsters, all part of the same gangster regime. What, because they wear a white shirt and tie and they don't wear a uniform? It means that they're not acting like demagogues or like criminals of an invading army? Eternal World Television Network. Uh, EWTN, Jerry Lewis. All right, they, they had him on. I'm trying to get Jerry on. Hey, Jerry, I don't know if you listen to the show, but you and I would agree... Jerry, Savage calling. We'll reminisce about you and Buddy Hackett and roast pork on garlic break sandwiches up at the uh, Lock Sheldrake. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. I don't want to hear the Rolling Stones ever again. They're part of the poison. They are the devil. Now, I look back on the 60s, when the Rolling Stones, I should look up to him because he dances like a moron at 80. They're part of the disease. They encourage people to get stoned and to get high on marijuana, you know, all the, the high on cocaine, marijuana, drugs. I'm supposed to look up to Mick Jagger? To me, a pox on all of them. I'm sick of this, this, this hero worship. If you want to know how America got degraded to the point where ISIS can make such a stronghold against such an attack upon us and we don't respond, how we can be invaded by illegal aliens and the men of the country don't stand up and demand a stop to it, go back to the 60s and study the playbook of the communist revolution. And you will see a connection between the flooding of drugs, the rock and roll, the whole thing all put together. That's why they give each other awards day and night. They're part of the same machine. All right, I you sound like I'm just an old, angry guy. Well, I'm angry, that's true, and I'm not too old, but I'm really angry. I'm proud to tell you I'm really angry. And I'm sick and tired of apologizing for being angry at what's being done to my beautiful country, being stepped upon everywhere I turn. It's getting me sick that no one represents me. So when I find a soundbite where even Jerry Lewis... How old is he, Robert? Did you look it up? Still 89 years old. He has more sense than the thin smoker in Hawaii. Slams Obama, praises Donald Trump. Did you hear this one yet? Okay, next one, clip five, Jerry Lewis. What do you think of Donald Trump? I think he's great. Why? Because he's a showman. Mm. And we've never had a showman in the president's chair. Well, you had Ronald Reagan. He was a bit of a show. Well, that's different. Uh -huh. that, that was, you can't make a comparison with Ronald Reagan, because mm -hmm. I can do three hours on him with just praise. He was so good. See, right away, the interviewer tried to already put him down. Then we have, on the other side of the coin from Jerry Lewis, the evil racism of Samuel L. Jackson, Jr. I used to like this guy as an actor. I'm now on a boycott mode. If I see him in a movie, I turn the channel. I won't even let I won't even let my cable channel record that I'm watching anything with this racist pig in it. It's not the first time Samuel L. Jackson Jr. has shown his racism, by the way. In the following clip, in an interview with the Hollywood Reporter, Samuel L. Jackson Jr. exposed himself for being a hater of the highest order. He said he wanted the San Bernardino shooter to be another crazy white dude. And you're going to see his movie put out by by, by what, what, Harvey Weinstein's distributing it? Harvey Weinstein, another prize American. 
Maybe the ADL can give Harvey Weinstein another gift. Listen to this now in clip six. When that thing happened in France, we're sitting there going, oh, my God, it's terrorist. All of a sudden, I can't even tell you how much that day the thing was happening in San Bernardino. I was in Hawaii. How much I really wanted that to just be another, you know, crazy white dude <laughs> and not really some Muslims, you know, because it's like, oh, shit, it's here and it's here in another kind of way. Now, OK, it happened on an army base and it happened somewhere else. But now it's like they have a legitimate reason now to look at your Muslim neighbor, friend, whatever, in another way now. And they become the new young black men. Oh, man, you're down with them, huh? You're down with them, man. That is so cool. You're down with the young Muslim men. Well, you know, lock arms together and march in the streets for ISIS, Sammy. Sammy, get yourself a black flag and march in the streets. So he exposed himself for what he is. Hates whites. Hoped it would be a white man, but it wasn't. And now it's okay to look at your Muslim neighbor friend. And they become the new young black men. I've known young black men who weren't like what he's describing. I don't know. What is the only you know, young black men who are rebe rebels and revolutionaries who hate America? I met many young black men who don't hate America in my lifetime. When I was a young teacher, I taught at all black schools. Not everyone wanted to be like Samuel L. Jackson, Jr. Not everybody wanted to be uh, like Martin, what's his name, uh, whatever the one. Jackson, Jesse High. What does High Jackson has to say uh, recently about uh, ISIS? Nothing? Didn't, doesn't affect him? Can't put anything in the kitty from it? No marching for Jackson in solidarity with American victims of radical Islam? Or old Al Sharpie Tongue? Old Sharpie Tongue has nothing to say about ISIS? No, he just wants Cincinnati and Cleveland to burn now. Where do they get all these marches in every city over? Every time there's a police incident. Right away, bing, out of the woodwork. Give me minus 10. Bingo. There they are. They're marching already. All right. Line 5, KSFO, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Actually, yeah, KSFO. Bill. Hi. I wanted to ask, or, well, not ask, but comment that I was, uh, I guess, I, with all due respect to Jerry Lewis for his uh, charity work and technical advances in the industry, I used to mostly consider him in the same vein uh -huh. as you characterized uh Woody Allen, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, Larry David. Uh, I know, but he, but he isn't in that category, is he? Well, no, I've repented of my false view, I guess you'd say. But um, So you're saying you thought he was another liberal comedian, right? I, I had him pegged as that, yeah. All right, so what is the purpose of the call? You're, you're confessing? You might say, or I wondered if you had ever had the same thoughts. Before, okay, earlier. so you're asking a question. I, don't, I never thought of Jerry Lewis from a political point of view. I know that he was roundly attacked for being a great humanitarian. For, for 30 years, the guy raised money on Labor Day, and then all of a sudden he woke up, he was being attacked for exploiting the very people he helped with the most, multiple sclerosis. I couldn't understand that part of it, how the liberals attacked the very man who was uh, so good to children and people who were victims of MS. I never understood where that came from. Thank you, Bill. 855-407-282 is the phone number that opens up a uh, a single line on the Savage Nation. WABC, Kevin, thanks for calling from New York. What's on your mind? Thanks, Michael. Listen, why doesn't Samuel Jackson ask why they shot the two black women in California during that shooting? And I want to make a point about that. That's wait, wait, hold on. Slow down. Wait, who shot who what black women? San Bardino shooting. There were two black. Oh, you mean why the young, why the young Muslims who he has uh, uh, suddenly down with? How they shot black women in the San Bernardino office? Wait, well, let's open this up for a second, okay? When you observe postal shootings, witnesses, survivors say that he was he shot the guy right next to me. He looked at me and, and shot the next person, the supervisor. They selectively shoot who they execute in these shootings. How could you shoot black women, Muslims? How could Muslims? shoot black women the two black women you would think they would have put them out of the room and i want black well, you you would also think that the liberal media would have shown the faces of the san bernardino victims repeatedly so we all can join together against radical islam uh, uh, what do you think 
beautiful black 27-year-old and another lady, a black lady. Well, I guess, Samuel, 